All right, welcome to Founders Field Note, the podcast where you can learn from founders how to be founders. I'm Jason Klug, CEO and founder of Klugonics Group and serial entrepreneur. On this week's episode, we have Brad Devine. He's a client of mine. He's been great to work with. He's a YouTuber with his wife, Haley. He has a blog called Somewhere Divine. where They travel all over the world. A lot of great stories about their adventures and how they came to be the creators they are today. And Brad is also the founder of Holdland Brand, which they have created an amazing backpack that is perfect for the the on-the-go photographer and videographer, as well as the new product that's launching right now, which is a line of iris lenses for cameras. Uh, Very durable, high-end metal materials with titanium coating. They're pretty well-built product, and we're all excited for them to come to market. So listen in about Brad and his experience in the creator space, the YouTube space, as well as being a brand founder with his wife, Haley. And you've got an interesting story because it's like, I was looking at your YouTube channel seven years ago. It's different. I mean, you started it though, seven years ago. Yeah. Right? Well, even with you and your wife, that, we've been doing video because we did Vimeo before. Okay. <laughs> I mean, all my photo video started in high school. Mm-hmm. I didn't even need the credits, but I just like had to use up my time. Okay. And so I did like AP photography three times or whatever. Cool. Um, But then my wife had done video since she was like out of the womb, just doing stop motions and stuff. Really? Yeah. Like she loved it. And I was photo. And while I went on like a church mission, she had started up a production team with her brother. And this is like the transition from when like it was like video and huge cameras and stuff, Mm -hmm. right? To DSLR cameras when Mm -hmm. they made that switch over. So when I came back, she was like, hey, you know, I love you. I know you love to do photography. Like, have you thought about doing video? Because I had been sending her back videos and whatever stuff. With the production team, they started up in Utah and like... Everyone's getting married every 10 seconds. Oh, yeah. They they just... she did wedding videos. At first, it was wedding videos. Mm -hmm. And so um, they threw me in the deep end with that. They just said... So many weddings in Utah. It's the best place (laughs) to practice. Yeah, 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 I know. It's like, I mean, you got bridezillas, but... Yeah. um, But it was like such a good experience just to get in there because it teaches you at least like just being reactive to shots and Mm -hmm. like capturing those moments Mm -hmm. and um, learning like the camera Mm -hmm. and like the back of your hand, you know? Mm -hmm. And so that was like the initial. And then through that, like different um, brides or grooms, whatever their parents would see the video at the end result, because we would do a quick same day edit. And then at the reception, they're like seeing the video. That was from the morning. Thanks to my wife, because she's always been like this Same day edit is fast editor yeah, yeah. especially when you're capturing random events throughout a wedding and stuff totally. yeah. yeah wow and i mean the good thing is i love to shoot my wife loves to edit and so we made like a good good team that's great so anyway then we uh through those weddings were connected they were like oh that was a sick video can we can you do like a corporate video and so then we would then we did corporate videos and then um at this time we had instagram and it was it was just like The OG Instagram where you're Mm -hmm. posting like pictures of your food or like just random stuff, you know, poorly filtered, horrible filters. Mm -hmm. Like everything is sepia tone and Mm -hmm. like black and white or whatever. Mm -hmm. Pixelated. Pixelated. (laughs) Yeah. It's, you know, the old school Instagram icon. And then Facebook was just like going out, even though it's kind of the same thing. But uh, Mm -hmm. but anyway, so we started just doing then production shoots and that ended up taking us um, around the world really. And so we were Mm -hmm. starting to get all these opportunities to filming events and corporate events outside of the U S we'd be a lot in Asia and Hong Kong. Um, we went to like Peru a ton. We went over to Budapest and just started filming all this stuff. And then meanwhile, everyone was like curious of why we were out of the country. And then Instagram became that canvas and platform that people could kind of see behind the scenes. And Mm -hmm. then, I mean, eventually Instagram, started giving us opportunities to where we had a break where my my brother-in-law just took the company and blew it up that way and then Haley and I went off and did Instagram um mm-hmm. and did it that way then I mean previous to that we were also uploading all of our videos to Vimeo 
Yeah. Vimeo is great. I mean, if you want to search inspiration, Vimeo is like a place you'd go to and just search for just artistic, cool videos. Yeah, more quality, I feel like. Yeah. Yeah. But they don't have really a community. Yeah. I feel like it's just people that watch and then chime out, mm -hmm. right? Whereas YouTube is just like a, it's just a solid platform where you can build a community and it's a great way for people to kind of get that relationship with you. And so we started putting our videos out there and we had an awesome collaboration at the beginning um, with our friends Parker and Aspen. And then, I mean, that just introed us into YouTube. And then now we have like, those are probably our two main platforms is Instagram mm -hmm. and YouTube. Mm -hmm. um, try TikTok. I yeah, appreciate TikTok's it. hard. Yeah. It's, it's like daily clip it. It, it at, is, at least twice a day to really is. get a, the momentum, I feel like. Like, don't try to be emotionally tied to a TikTok video. Yeah. You just have to, like, upload it and let it go with the noise. And I think yeah. that's kind of what has been difficult for both my wife and I and what we do, because it's like we love curating and putting it out mm -hmm. there, you know. But also with social media, there's just so much noise. Even Instagram has become that way now, too. Mm -hmm. But I'm the reels. Like, if you're a dancer, you'll kill it on TikTok. Mm -hmm. But I'm not a dancer. I'm not a dancer. Yeah. No. But maybe yeah. that's what would make it good is yeah, not being possibly. a dancer and just failing. Yeah. I, I feel like like hearing from the, the people at TikTok and especially like with the brand that I'm running and yeah. get trying to get that build out on yeah. TikTok, all the people on the, like at TikTok are saying the algorithm needs two posts a day. Yeah. I and if, and as soon as you skip it, and it's interesting because we did it for a while and we stopped for like three days. Yeah. And then when we started posting again, it was like the buildup and views started over completely. Really? So it's like we had to completely start to build back up. The so I feel like you have to punch it out every single day. And then occasionally you'll get one that's like a banger that catches and yeah. then goes. And then you'll get followers out of that. And it's like, it, it's just a lot. Yeah. You have to be ready for that. <laughs> I, it's, it, it's a full-time thing. I, I have a lot of friends that do TikTok and I just admire them because I... I couldn't, but it seems, I mean, I know companies that market through TikTok crush mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. They do so good. But I do know that if you want to gain reach, mm -hmm. TikTok is definitely the place yeah. you want to be. And can you pull them out of TikTok to other platforms? You know what I mean? Yeah, like that, Vine. Yeah, you remember yeah. Vine? It's yeah. like, oh, Vine gets OG going. TikTok. Yeah. And it was like interesting to watch the people that, you know, they got big on Vine but in parallel, they're starting a YouTube and then yeah. they're posting and repurposing the stuff on Instagram. So they're building a following on all the platforms. Right. The people that didn't diversify when Vine died, they died, you yeah. know? So it's like, I'm wondering if TikTok is going to be a similar story. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know. I mean, they did try to bring Vine back. I think it was an app called Bitly or something like mm -hmm. that. Oh yeah. Didn't, didn't get traction. Yeah. Was that a... Byte? Maybe it was Byte. Well, you remember uh, Casey Neistat's yeah. one? Yeah. Was that it? Oh, was he the owner to that? Well, he he's built that that company that was similar to Vine, like it was quick videos. Yeah. I, I think it was more closer to Snapchat in a way, but it, they sold the CNN. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Like did, you, did you use Snapchat? I used it, but not like aggressively. Right. You know, I, it was, I think, a little younger demographic than me. But <laughs> I just felt like you just posted nudes on it and that was uh, it. yeah i did so I, that's why i, I never didn't really like, get into it it was like but it's interesting because like the younger demographic like my cousin who's like i think he's like 23 you yeah. know he's like yeah we, a lot of my friends we still communicate on it right you know? yeah so i know that like, like i've seen huh. i have some friends that are just like it's kind of like marco polo how people use mm. it now yeah sending little video clips yeah. they'll like be looking down they yeah have it's their always chin. <laughs> yeah <laughs> just some weird text over everything. sitting at the dmv <laughs> yeah or, yeah yeah i never got into it. i don't know yeah. the next app that i am i was just telling you about that mm -hmm. i'm really getting into is amp so that's it's ran by amazon mm -hmm. i was gonna have my friend actually build it and do it in collaboration with him because he just builds apps but mm -hmm. it's basically like I love music, but in this you can get all the music rights to post whatever. So you can do soundtracks of genres mm -hmm. or whatever, or you can mm -hmm. do talking topics, but you can play music in a whole station and then you chime in and then you can set, like start talking about a topic or bring in guests. Interesting. There's a chat, there's a is, chat feed as well. Is there like a Twitch component to it then? In a way, I guess. I mean, will there be like subscribers to you that'll listen to music? Yeah, like a listen but it's along like, yeah. type thing. Yeah. Interesting. So then you can, I mean. For us, I'm thinking like bringing 
and just people. So it's going to be more carefree, mm-hmm. but like sharing cool playlists and stuff. Cause I do, I, I mean, it's not really anything crazy, but I have like a Spotify, mm-hmm. you know, playlist that people have followed. So I'm yeah. like, Oh, this would be a cool way that I could share music, but then also chat with them at the same Curate. time mm-hmm. and talk about just whatever topics. And I don't know. So that's like an app I'm looking at right now mm-hmm. Amp, that I think, I mean, it's not even picked up anything yet. Like Halsey's on it and she has 8,000. Mm-hmm. That's it. All right. So, so, so the, now like with the YouTube though, like that's when you, you, you started that like seven years ago. It looks like it was primarily focused on travel and content creation or video production, stuff yeah. like that. So, you know, when the production company went away, did you, did you guys switch to then focusing on YouTube and trying to monetize it as a day t- job? Or? Yeah. I mean, the thing is like, if you're a gamer or if you're like Mr. Beast or whatever, right? Mm-hmm. And monetizing is great. Like you'll, you'll make so much money, but mm-hmm. you have to be within like the high, oh yeah, you know, views Huge of each account. video, mm-hmm. right? And just know that click channel. Mm-hmm. Um, the reason why we use YouTube is more for community engagement. Mm-hmm. They just get to know us in a better, it's not just like a static post, right? Mm-hmm. It's like, they get to hang out with you for a while. Yeah. And so going into the vlogging world was so difficult for me. Yeah. Like turning a camera and like pointing to myself and in the middle of public, like I'm not, I'm not mm-hmm. like that outgoing. Mm-hmm. So when I'm like at, well, like Disneyland or something, I'm pointing a camera at myself. At first mm-hmm. I felt so, I felt like everyone was watching me when in reality, no one was watching. Now me. everybody's used to it. Now everyone's used to it. Yeah. I mean, I remember when they put the, I mean, you flip your camera and you're talking on there. I used to be so shy and now I'm just yeah. like, whatever. You well, know? do you watch Casey Neistat then? And did yeah, you, I've uh, seen a couple of, I mean, I was like back in the day when he did the whole snowboarding through New York. And yeah. All that. I mean, he did it like every day for 800 days. Nuts. But he's back. He's took a break and now he's like back and he posts like weekly videos. Yeah. But I, he's such a creative storyteller, but also the way he does like videography and his cuts and stuff like yeah. that, I always think is super interesting. Yeah. But it's always funny to see him like, he'll like leave his camera up and then like ride up on a skateboard and grab <laughs> it and stuff. Yeah. And I always like wonder like, you know, someone sitting in a coffee shop just nearby watching, watching this guy just like <laughs> yeah. leave his camera yeah. and then ride away and then ride back up to it and grab it and start talking to it. So I could imagine it's like, you know, yeah. I wish he I got knew, some balls. I, I wish I knew the name. There was this one comedian, like, I think he, I think he was on TikTok as well, but he'd be, uh, I think he was on Vine as well, but he would kind of take fun of like, these creators mm-hmm. and influencers, and I'm guilty of it, mm-hmm. but it's like he would set the camera down and he'd be in the airport and he'd run past the camera and in text he'd be like, I'm about to miss my flight. <laughs> and then he goes back to the camera, picks it up and then and goes keeps off. that he's in like, the cut. Wait. Yeah, yeah, but it's that's like, funny. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, Casey Nice, that man, he's, the amount of video and content he's created is insane. Well, so th- looking at it from, uh, more from the business standpoint, so, there has to be a point where you and your wife make a decision about technically becoming YouTubers. Like full time. Yeah. So yeah. when was that? Was that the seven years ago when you started posting or did you start posting? And then five years ago you started to um, go aggressively at it and start figuring out ways where you can start your other brand or you can, you know. At that time, I think we were, we were still doing some production work mm-hmm. and little like local sponsors here and there. Mm-hmm. Um. But look, I mean, you can make it full time when it when it supports you. Yeah. And AdSense and views weren't supporting us. Yeah. Because it's really not that great on YouTube. Mm-hmm. But uh, what companies want is where eyes are at, and mm-hmm. so and then also like community. So we weren't able to get through like AdSense. It brought in like you know a few things here and there, mm-hmm. but it was then like the community we built, and then. Sponsors were able to plug in. Yeah, doing brand deals. Yeah. Yeah. So at first it was just like, we were, we were hyped and like first companies were coming in and, mm-hmm. and then we were like, I think we could do this full time. And so then we shifted over and just put all of our effort in there and kind of created the canvas to where sponsors and corporate companies could place their product. And yeah. so we wanted to do what we loved. And at that time we were doing just travel. Yeah. And that's what we were known for, really, because we would travel with all these corporate companies and people were like curious about culture, curious about um, where we would go and visit and stay and want mm-hmm. like, you know, a trip planning itinerary. And so we kind of just rode that wave and continued to travel around. And then we had our kids and 
but we we still continue to do it and kind of eliminated that stigma of like oh once you have kids you know yeah traveling's done it's like the bucket list family yeah <laughs> like right? we know them really well and yeah. like they're yeah. they're a testament to that as well it's like yeah. no like that's that's not the end of it you know yeah. all this stigma even even when people say like once you get married like your life's over yeah you know that's not true no kelsey and i basically right before we had our kid we, per, we we made sure we booked trips for next year <laughs> yes that's awesome you know? so like maui and stuff we're yeah. making sure that we have to learn to travel with a kid. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. And time it when he's like not crawling around and stuff like that. And they adapt. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And it's like, we, we didn't want to do it full time because eventually like our kids, we we wanted them to socialize and have yeah. friends and have roots, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But, uh, but the experience and culture we we're able to like introduce them to is priceless. Like we, I mean, we're about to take off even now. We're going to mm-hmm. go to live in Australia from... Uh, right after Christmas till April. Yeah. And so it's a good amount of time to s- really settle in. Yeah. That's going to be yeah. wild. Um, especially cool. my, I mean, close to two year old on an 18 hour flight. It's going to be nuts, but wow. It's, it's going to be Is good. it direct or was it go through? Fly there. It's direct from LAX. Okay. That's Coming not bad. back, we're going to stop in, it's like a layover in Fiji. In so Fiji? Are you going to stop in Fiji then? You I mean, should. I don't think we're going to go out. I wish. Uh, I've never been. My wife has. Fiji sounds cool. Yeah, she got to go to like Bora Bora and stay at those Four Seasons stuff. Very nice. I wasn't there. Yeah, that's a bummer. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's one thing that I'm like, yeah. okay, we got to plan another trip there or something. Yeah. But. Then let's talk about because you you didn't you create some kind of service where people your followers can travel with you. Yeah. So let's yeah. hear about that because that's that's like you know a very creative way to monetize. Yeah, and that and it's another way to connect with community. Right? Yeah. And that's, that's what we're all about. It was like, how, how do we challenge these statements and like, or even challenge this vicarious living, right? Because mm-hmm. everyone was like, oh, what's it like there, to travel like there. that? Like, yeah. We all of a sudden flipped it. We just said, well, why don't you come with us? Yeah. So we, um, we started these service expedition trips and throughout all these corporate events and that we would go film, they just felt like they were missing something. Like it was either too, too like luxurious Mm -hmm. and no real like heartfelt impact Mm -hmm. or it was vice versa right yeah where it was like very impactful but like you were miserable and miserable (laughs) miserable pads and stuff yeah like you 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 were not happy and so we wanted to they're called somewhere divine expeditions Mm -hmm. um we wanted to introduce this new way of experiencing culture and places and visit these like wonders of the world, mm-hmm. but, uh, but doing it right. And every time we would go on these trips and we'd get to know locals and we helped locals and we, you know, after that, you felt, you felt a little less of a tourist when you went to go and experience their wonders, you mm-hmm. know? And so that's kind of the template of how we did some of our expeditions. It's like, let's go, let's go have service for the first, like whatever days. Mm-hmm. And then afterwards we would go and, and experience their their land and it and it felt um unifying especially because it was like you know social media and just the internet and everything it's great because it connects us all but there's no connection like real human you know mm-hmm. one-on-one experiences together in person mm-hmm. we'll see with meta but i still feel right. like this is better than meta definitely so, yeah, yeah you know it's interesting because the the other thing looking at it from the outside it's like Traveling is a skill, especially like to other countries, right? Right, And I learned this because I didn't v- travel very much. And then I started having to go to China four times a year. Right. You know, yeah. and it was yeah. like, you know, so the first time I go, it's like, holy cow, this is crazy. And then after I go the next time, it's like, okay, I know how to get around. I know yeah. food and stuff like that. And then right. I go back again. Now I know exactly which hotel I want to stay at, like wh- what I want to do while I'm there and right. where I'm going to explore. And that that by itself would be like worth documenting and educating people on. Yeah. So is that part of like part of the, when people are traveling with you, is this like the first time they've ever gone overseas and stuff like that? And like, interestingly enough, the first trip we went on, we didn't have an age limit. Mm -hmm. So that was like a four, no, it wasn't 14. I think she was like, maybe she was 14, 15 year old girl that came on the trip. (laughs) She's like, I've never left the U S we're like, Oh crap you know yeah, ba- babysitters she, yeah she actually ended up it wasn't 14 i think it, she was 15 yeah but still still young yeah, yeah. um the parents are like 
they're like, go on, I guess. Good like, luck. Yeah. <laughs> but like yeah. she ended up being the most mature out of all the girls. Yeah. Um, and funny enough, it's like 99% girls. Mm -hmm. They're the ones that have hearts. Us guys don't know mm -hmm. what we're doing. We're just yeah. playing Call of Duty. But yeah. like, <laughs> it's, uh, yeah. but yeah, I mean, it, it was, it was just such a, a cool experience though. And a lot of them, it was their first time leaving the country, but it was cool in, in, in this like community, like our summer divine group, how we grew together. And then also they grew relationships with people out there. Mm -hmm. And then it was a cool circle too, when it came to, I mean, marketing even, right? So we would create these expeditions and these expeditions would highlight a foundation or organization or project, mm -hmm. which then, I mean, we'd be able to capture content to market that, but then also it would market summer divine expeditions. Mm -hmm. Uh, then meanwhile, we're bringing in all these people who wanted to document their trip experience, whether it's not the, we were pretty, um, we had rules when it came to the, the actual service, right? Because we mm -hmm. don't want really to be like, you know, doing a selfie as you're handing yeah. food to someone because that's just obviously wrong. Yeah, you get but, it. Yeah. But um, for the wrong reasons. Yeah, for the wrong reasons. But uh, But when they went and then looked at like, you know, the Victoria Falls or they go and they see Machu Picchu and document it. It was just great marketing back to us as well. Mm -hmm. But all in all, like we we have friends from those trips. Like it was very intimate and we have friends till this day of that were attendees and now they're our like mm. friend friends. So that's great. It was a great experience and um, hopefully we'll do them again. It kind of got shut down with, with COVID and yeah. just how risky it is right now, right? Because if we book a whole trip and then all of a sudden the country's like, we're closing off. Yeah. Like reimbursing and the hotel, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. It's just a little complicated, but hopefully we'll start them up soon. I mean, that's, I, I'm afraid to go to China still just because of their current policies. It's yeah. tough. So it's like, thankfully we have the team there, but it's like, yes. I, you know, like that's right now it's a 10 day right quarantine and it would suck if you went and if you got COVID on the flight or something and then yeah, stuck in China, that would be a little brutal. You know, it doesn't look <laughs> good. <laughs> yeah. So it seems like it's opening up, but we'll see. The, the good thing about like, taking people on those trips too that haven't traveled before. Like once you do it once, yeah. you you get a taste of it. It yeah. eliminates that fear, that unknown. Totally. And it's it's almost like a bug then, it right? So totally where, where they're going to go on their own trips after that. It, it's, there's something just adventurous about it. Mm -hmm. And you just, yeah, that bug exactly. It's like, mm -hmm. I just want to, like the world then becomes your playground. And you're like, I just want to go explore and just, you know, where it's safe, obviously, but just experience these cultures mm -hmm. i think that's just the coolest it's less part. intimidating yeah yeah i've been to china uh mainland china twice yeah which which part uh xian and shanghai and yeah. beijing okay those so, three i mostly go to southern china but yeah cool it's a great culture yeah people you know here in the states you know until you see it and experience it it's like a you know there's a lot I, I have a lot of respect for the parts of their culture that some people might think differently about, but yeah. it's like, I, once you understand why they are the way they are on certain That's things, the, it's like, uh, it totally yeah. makes sense. Like, okay, I get that. Cause it's That's different why they from are that like yeah. American culture, right. Or yeah. like being like very assertive and stuff. But mm -hmm. when you really get to know them and that's the part that's cool when you get to know people's mm -hmm. culture, um, and how to work with them too. That's yeah. like what I figured out a lot. Like, you, you know, how they're, they'll hold things back or, you know, be protective of information because, you know, I don't know, they don't want to be reprimanded or something right. like that. Yeah. But then when they realize, like, we run it like an American company where it's like, that's going to be celebrated yeah. when we when we get that information or learn about that, okay, the office isn't comfortable. Okay, well, why didn't you tell us? <laughs> you know, let's get you a new building, yeah. right? Like, yeah. that, that's the type of stuff that goes on where it's, it's you know, it's just the way it is. And yeah. you, once you start to learn that, then you start to ask the right questions to get things out to where they feel more comfortable opening up about right. stuff. And I think a lot of the team over there is, likes that more and more knowing that they have a voice and stuff like that. Yeah. So that's been rewarding working with, you know, helping adapt that Chinese culture, at least at our company. Over yeah. There. That's a cool aspect yeah. of your work for sure. So, so the, when did the, when did Holdland start? Is that a COVID project or wh when did that uh, kind of no, come about? It was previous about? to that. I was mean, it? It's funny because at first, this was like 2016, maybe. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because yeah. we did the backpacks ago. at first. Mm -hmm. And that's funny because I was in, I was somewhere in Asia, actually on an expedition trip. And I was talking to one of my friends on the trip. And I was just like, you know, because social media is, it's, it's so good. Um, but if, if you don't 
if you don't show up, then yep. it's done, right? You lose it or you have to build back up. Yeah, you know? and yeah. like algorithms and all that stuff and, mm-hmm. and just what's new, trending, all that stuff. You just never know. Mm-hmm. And so I always felt uneasy having all my eggs in one basket. Yeah. Uh, and I always told myself I would never design a backpack. Like, because I'm like, <laughs> if I, I need to do something tangible that I can, you know, give value in. And I was like, I'll do anything, but not a backpack. Because everyone goes to college, they come out, they say they're an entrepreneur and they do a backpack. Or yeah, a or, or a shirt company. Yeah, you would know more than anything. I'm yeah. sure you have them coming to you all the time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> or a shirt company, yeah. yeah. I mean, no offense to them if they're making it. Crush yeah, it, yeah. go hustle, great. Yeah, but they, can they build the brand and you know yeah, really get the following, the consistency? Like That's the tough thing there. Yeah, and I mean, fortunately on our yeah. end, it was kind of flipped because we had the following mm-hmm. or, or, or like the community. And so... um Anyway, but then it led to me designing a backpack. Yeah. And I was like, if I'm going to do this, I want to introduce just like something new. Yeah. I wanted just to be this same backpack in a different color. Mm -hmm. And so I came out with the first backpack um, under Holdland. And I came out with the name Holdland because I was just out there. And at first it was going to be just bags and backpacks and those soft goods, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm like, Holdland is like traveling. Mm -hmm. You know, you go around. Um... For the, it, what was the problem you were solving with that backpack? The Did backpack. you feel like you had a mission with the backpack I mean, other I had, than just starting the brand? Yeah. Like I had, again, from my production days, right? I would just go on these trips. I would load up my backpack by the end of the trip. Like it wouldn't add any convenience to me while I was on the trip. It would just mm-hmm. hold my stuff, which mm-hmm. I guess is a convenience, but it just basic, right? It was just yeah. a, a potato sack. Mm-hmm. I would come back. I would have like, a jacked up back and yeah. it was just like not convenient at all. It was just a mess. It was just a mess. It wouldn't even really find just, stuff and yeah. cables all tied up and yeah. stuff. Yeah, yeah. Like, and I'm just like, there has to be something that at least looks aesthetically pleasing as well mm-hmm. that doesn't like highlight that I have something techy. Mm-hmm. And so with Holden, like what I was able to kind of achieve was that back support and then also some, uh, dude, it was the coolest thing, like I've, I've really, like, I love your industry, what you're into because mm-hmm. developing and stuff like that products, it's, fun. it's so fun. And I remember when I was developing this backpack, um, I have a good friend, Bo Euler, who he connected me with a guy who, I know Bo, you know, Bo yeah. enlisted design. Yeah. Okay. So he, um, we done it, we had done a project together in the past and then he was like, if you ever want to work together, let's do it. So I was like, Hey, I'm going to do this backpack. And then he connected me with this guy who'd previously did you know, backpacks for Jansport and Hurley and mm. whatever. And so the specific, you know, capability backpacks, like people are very specialized in it a lot of yeah. times. This backpack yeah, which is great. Too. Yeah. Oh yeah. So anyway, I'm like, I'm trying to communicate what I want to him and then he gives it to the factory. Um, but at one point I'm like, I need a hip belt that actually helps me. And so this was one of the cool things of the first backpack because, and I ended up cutting it out of cardboard, which is every developer and engineer's best tool i guess yeah or cardboard it, pre clay, 3d printing whatever yeah. yeah um so i cut out this cardboard and i'm like duct taping and all that and i recorded this video and it was basically like a hip belt you open and then it, an origami like square comes out that you could put your lens in and so i had yeah. on both sides so you have like a holster for your camera right yeah. in front of you because yeah. i remember a time i was on machu picchu and i was filming this corporate company and ceo of the company's there and i'm needing to show up and i had no help and I'm like switching from, I want like variety. And so I was switching from a zoomed lens to a wide angle lens. And I was doing it quickly back and forth while they are moving forward on this trail. And I just yeah. was like in a mess. And I got it, but I was a sweaty mess. And yeah. it just wasn't. And convenient. you're risking your equipment, dropping Dude, got it or whatever. On the side of yeah. yeah. That's, Horrible. That's so great. I had to develop that. And then also the back support and everything. And um, I was super stoked on it. And, and that was the beginning first product. Mm-hmm. But while I was in, um, while I was in Vietnam, where I was um, doing the backpack, I had thought of an idea of, of another inconvenience within the photography space. Mm-hmm. Um, and I guess by the time everyone will see this, it'll hopefully be out by then. Well, yeah, we'll, <laughs> by we'll, then. we'll, we'll probably <laughs> launch this what? Yeah, that's so when around it Christmas rise. time. Yeah, around Christmas so time. So we could time it with you, though. Yeah. Yeah, because so we will. It should be after that. We're air freighting the first yeah. ones in. but. Yep. And this is the first time I'm like publicly talking about it. But mm-hmm. when I was there, an inconvenience of mine when shooting as well was just the simple thing as a lens cap. Yeah. Um, there's a f- I mean, dude, I can't tell you. I'm already <laughs> missing one of the lens caps for these cameras. It's the like literally, I don't know where it went. I, it, it, 
Yeah. And it's, it's I mean, and you're in an office. Yeah. You're in like a controlled space. Yeah. Right? It should be built in. <laughs> and, and this is, again, like this Machu Picchu <laughs> yeah. should, which I'm doing. So, yeah. I mean, when I was at Machu Picchu, though, like I'm going and I clip a bush and it knocks my lens cap off. And fortunately, I hear it go and I yep. get it, you know? Mm -hmm. But there's even like memes going on right now and TikToks of people that are like, take off their lens cap, set it down, and, and the gone. camera looks somewhere <laughs> and then they go back and it's gone, yeah. you know? Yeah. And I'm like, that's every photographer's just OCD. And there's, there's two types of people that either are OCD like me mm -hmm. or you're like my wife and you're like, I could care less. I'm just going to leave it in my backpack because mm -hmm. I don't want to deal with it. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that was like a problem that I wanted to fix. And it's an inconvenience that I didn't want to deal with when shooting. And, uh, and the, your lens is like, you scratch it, you're done. Yeah, so some of them are like, what, no. three grand? Yeah, you know? some of them go way up there. Yeah. But, but like once you go L series, right, or mm -hmm. like step up from just the the kit ones, mm -hmm. you're, you're looking at like a thousand up, yeah. right? And so I was like, okay, well, there's a style of photography as well called run and gun. So mm -hmm. you, it's the ones that like aren't setting up, you know, they're like just going around catching these action Especially shots. Especially bloggers and stuff like that. Especially right? bloggers, mm -hmm. um, high adventure or even just like soccer mums, right? <laughs> it's yeah. like they've got their kids to deal with. Mm -hmm. I was, I remember I was in the factory and um, I was talking, I had um, one of my designers there and then I had the factory owner and then we were just looking at material and then I was like, you know what else? I was like, do you work with metal and stuff? I was, I had no clue, right? <laughs> He's yeah. like, no, but they're all connected. So yeah. um, anyway, I had this idea and then I, I started snowball effect with this idea and I was like, what if that was just something like 007? Mm -hmm. Just, you know, irises iris. already exist within a, a lens, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I started getting obsessed with, with irises because that's what then the designer said. He's like, oh, you mean an iris? I was like, yeah. And I looked it up on Google. And then he said, oh, there's like a, there's a, there's a professional football, like Mercedes stadium, whatever. And I guess oh, yeah. the roof in closes. Atlanta. Yeah. Yeah, I've been there. Yeah, so, so I moved here from Atlanta. So yeah, I saw oh, you build know. that. It's yeah. pretty sweet. So it's a cool thing. That's an example. iris, yeah. right? And yeah. so he told me about that at first. And then I just got obsessed with just irises and mechanical irises. And then I went through this rabbit hole of just different types of irises. Mm -hmm. And I was like, if I can include this, or if I can, if I can, and I and in my head, I'm like, it's possible, it's doable. Yeah. I didn't know if there was a pattern for it yet, or if like, mm -hmm. you know, Canon or Nikon already advanced in it. But I was like, this is what we need, like a lens. You put it on there and you just a twist and then it covers the most important part of your camera, right? Mm -hmm. And so down that rabbit hole and I was looking through my, you know, not so savvy self. I was looking through Google patterns and all that and I couldn't find a single thing. Yeah. And so then I was like, okay. Saw an opportunity. Yeah. <clears throat> so this is pre-COVID then when you came over that? So this was... Because you were at the factory, so you, you know... This was, yeah. I think I've the got, last time I went to China was December of 2019, then I couldn't get back in after that. No. Yeah. Yeah. So, so this it had to be before just then. before then. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And I, I have a picture where it's like, it shows backpack material, that, that and then all of a sudden there's this like little weird yeah. lens with an iris on it. There you go. Of just okay. Sharpie, you know, whatever. <laughs> that's and great. I'm like, that's when it first I mean, that's a, that's how that's how those good ideas start. So yeah. it's, it's, and it's in line with Holdland as a brand, right? It's yeah. a utilitarian you know, made yeah. by a videographer, photographer. Yeah. That has plenty of experience on the field. So yeah. Makes so sense. Adding that convenience. And that's what yeah. this product needs to kind of accomplish. And so this one, you know, when I finally got the pattern, I was like, man, this is, this is awesome. And then I, I connected with, with Bo and, mm -hmm. and also I hired out a, um, Iris calculator mm -hmm. guy out of Canada mm -hmm. and he did the math for the Iris thing. Mm -hmm. And then I went and, talk to to Bo and they did some of the designing there and then I was like I need someone to bring this to life and then mm -hmm. he recommended you guys yeah and that's when it all began the and engineering action it come to life yeah so and now it's 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 there production is beginning it's yeah PO's yeah. are placed that's exciting <laughs> it's nuts yeah because that's now we're talking like almost four years right that's true. three years wild? it's wild yeah I keep thinking back to stuff right before, like I was in New York for the New York Toy Fair in like end of January, 2020. Yeah. And 
you know, came back from that trip. And then like literally like two weeks later, they like turned the Javits center into like a temporary hospital. Yeah. And it's, but that's crazy to think that that was like three years ago now. Yeah, that's, so time flew. It's such a blur. That it's time. a blur. But, yeah. But yeah, it's crazy. Cause I am, I, I mean, you can talk to your team probably and they'd say the same, but I'm annoying when it comes, cause I just want to get things done. Yeah. Per, keep it moving. I'm just like, you've taken some breaks here and there I've you had know, to hiccups. figure things out, but I've you had... always came back and kept it moving. Yeah. Which is common though. Like, yeah, you know, like out yeah. of all the clients you work with, like, you know, sometimes it's like you get to a prototype and then you need to go talk about it, get yeah. some feedback, it. you know, raise money, whatever the hell it is. Right. Yeah. And then you're back to it. Right. Yeah. So yeah. it's like, at least you didn't forget about it. I've had people that have no, come right. to me and then like just yesterday we had a meeting with a guy that I talked to like five years ago on his idea. And now he just got to a prototype because he had to figure a bunch of stuff yeah. out, but he kept going at it because he kept seeing the problem existing. Yeah. And that's just enough motivation. See, I think I tripped into progression. Like I, I had the backpacks going. I sold out of those. Mm -hmm. I, but the thing is, is I was still so much time in social media and, you know, just all of that. Mm -hmm. And then I also had this website for our travel and all that we were mm -hmm. building as well. Yeah. That I didn't give hold on the time it needed at first. Mm -hmm. It sold out, which was still sick. And I only had like one return. Yeah. On the backpack. Great. So it had that potential, but I didn't give it its time and nourishment mm -hmm. that it needed. So honestly, I I did, I was guilty of putting the iris on a back burner for a bit because yeah. I was like, where am I going to get the funds? I don't have the bandwidth. Mm -hmm. Um, it's a good idea right now, but that's all it was, was an mm -hmm. idea, right? Yeah. I mean, talk about tripping forward. I, you know, I ended up talking to a good friend, and then he would advise me to, you know talk to investors and stuff like that. And then long story short, after talking to them motivated me where I'm like, dude, I'm just going to bootstrap this like, yeah. myself. Yeah. And so that's where I'm at right now. And I, and I feel more motivated than ever, but uh, just excited about the direction that it's going. And like yeah. the team and everyone that I've been able to gather here together mm -hmm. too. It's just like, it's been such a, a trip. Like it's been... It's in, and now I have this bug. Mm -hmm. I had the travel bug, and now yeah. I have the development bug, the entrepreneurial yeah. consumer good bug, <laughs> yeah. which is I've had for a which while. Which you now. know <laughs> all about, yeah. 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 So, yeah. I mean, it's, if I was in your shoes, man, I'd be creating things left. I have and to right. stop myself. Yeah. But no thankfully, doubt. with all the client work, it's like that satisfies my ADHD. Yeah. You know, and and I, it's really difficult to start multiple brands. No. You know? So it's like yeah. I, I limit myself, but. But you know, like the factories though, they're like, they're like, oh, the factories I can make, will I can make shoes, dude, I can make a suitcase, sure. I can make this and that. And you're like, whoa, you have to be careful. But it that. opens up your mind and you yeah. have to bring it back. Yeah. But that's always a, uh, you know, you get like this entrepreneur yeah. mindset where it's like, I can make anything and sell anything, the but then you dilute syndrome. what's important. Yeah. You know what I that's mean? True. Where yeah. it's like, for you, it's like the, the lens cap is a great next idea. Then I feel like the lens cap is even an opportunity to re-spark and bring the bag back. Yeah. Is that it's the true. plan? Yeah. So know? I'll be doing this, the lens cap. I'll have three sizes going out. Mm -hmm. um, so you're covering, a, the fact that you have three sizes is good because you're covering a lot of the market. Yeah. People could like, buy three, they could buy two, they could, you're totally. not going it, to, it's not like you have to shoot for someone that has that lens. Now you can hit three no, different. Yeah. You know. And that's like, that's covering the majority of the market, mm -hmm. those three sizes. And I'm just stoked to see where people take them and how they get creative with it too. Cause there's like a mm -hmm. cool creative aspect to it too. I mean, it closes and every, it's just like it, honestly, I use it as a fidget toy yeah. too. Cause it's just so fun. And stuff, yeah. right? Vignetting so, on it too. I mean, yeah. we've eliminated, but if you want it, go ahead. So that's why it's interesting. You can use it as like a, you know, you can use it as like a an pinhole effect. camera too. Yeah. That's like you cool. You put it down to a pin and then it actually makes it dark. And I don't know, people get creative in many ways, but I think that's a fun aspect to see. But, this this will definitely be like new blood into the veins. Mm -hmm. um, and then I have a second 2.0 version of the backpack through like great feedback from people and then yeah. also just ways to improve it and learning about how to work with factories as well. Mm -hmm. um, lowering cost, making the material more durable and, mm -hmm. you know, I'm, I'm stoked on this. So that has three colors coming out on that one. Um, that should be releasing around the same time as well. But it's just, mm -hmm. it's fun. It's like fun yeah. to to have this vision of something and then to actually get it tangible. Mm -hmm. Again, I'm sure you guys know, but it's uh, being able to add that value also to, because I, I consider myself more of a consumer myself. Like yeah. I want that for me. Yeah. 
And if I want it, I'm sure someone else would want it as well. Yeah. And so I'm very excited just to see how, um, you know, it just elevates people's experience in creating and getting out and, and shooting and doing stuff. Yeah. The hardest thing though about that is, and I've learned this, sadly, your opinion only matters <laughs> if you're buying a million of them. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like, this is the thing. It's great to start knowing that, you know, you love it and you use it because you are the demographic and the consumer. But, you know, knowing that when you get a thousand, two thousand of them out on the market, yeah. that that feedback is going to come back in. Yeah. And, you know, you're going to learn more from all the different use cases that you're not capable of doing as a single human being. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I'm excited for that feedback though. Like I'm, it's valuable right now. I'm just sitting on this stuff. Mm -hmm. Right. And I am just excited to see what people give back, you know, mm -hmm. their, their feedback and everything. Mm -hmm. And I've heard stuff already and I'm, you know, luckily, but we've, we've been able to make those changes before we actually get yeah. them all in hand. Mm -hmm. But ultimately I just want to create products that people are stoked on and it mm -hmm. just, elevates their experience. And so they can't look back and be like, I want to go back to, you know, a traditional lens cap. Right. It's like, no, dude, I, this thing, like, I don't have to worry about it. This mm -hmm. backpack's super, super comfortable, adds this convenience and mm -hmm. fits all of my equipment. Yeah. Um, so they won't have to look elsewhere. And I'm, I'm kind of excited for the day that I start getting people trying to knock me off because that yeah. needs to be successful. It's flattering. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> it, it is flattering. Know, but... I know you cannot make the iris out of plastic. That's, so okay. they will yeah. do that yep, and true. it will be trash. Yep. But, or it won't have the smooth action that uh, yours does. Or it will be thicker, vignetting. Yeah. I mean, we've, yeah. we've gone over all this trial yes, and error. So many yeah. times. So <laughs> it's, it's dialed. Yeah, It's dialed. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, so excited then, for that. Then, then the future, you know, now that you, you, you're going to focus energy on the brand and, you know, is the YouTube stuff going to shrivel up as much or like is consistency there? You I know? think it's going to go back to its roots of just creating for fun. Okay. So not, sustaining. not as much of a job, but more of just keeping, yeah. keeping a flow I mean, out there so people know what's going on in your life and yeah, stuff like that. I, I mean, I feel like we've, um, we had some life changes too and mm -hmm. mixing up our house and just making a life so it's more, you mm -hmm. know, not so reliant on that stuff being cranked up like crazy. Yep. That's and smart. I mean, and also with times you just don't know right now. Right. So, yep. and we've, we've started to make that transition already that we are, we're, we're, we're starting to just partner with people that we truly can stand behind. Mm -hmm. That's um, great. And so uh, Haley, my wife, she's, you know, Canon ambassador and we love our partnership with Canon. Mm -hmm. I mean, we'll talk about royal, not royalties, but like, <laughs> yeah, we'll talk about, uh, what's the word? Licensing deals, hopefully in the future. Yeah, I mean, yeah. That would be epic. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. We'll see. Um, but I mean, our partnership, at least on the sponsorship side and that she's an ambassador is just so great. And so we, with that, there'll be things here and there with ads, but it should come off to our community just like, oh yeah, like you guys mm -hmm. and Canon and we can stand behind it. So we'll continue to do that. But um, but I think as we continue to do like product-based stuff and that we will become more dependent on that, mm -hmm. um, that we'll, we'll just be able to have fun with, it, with video stuff. The brand will also, I feel like, bring new eyes to your, your yeah. channel and your community, right? Where it's like... are. You know, and that being said, knowing that you're bringing in videographers and photographers and yeah. stuff, do, do you think that'll shape sometimes the content that you put out to where you, you, you're appealing to videographers specifically, or is it going to just stick to your roots there? Um, you know, like if you know you have a bunch of people that are doing video work, are you going to do a tutorial on, on, on specific type of videography or something? Like, is it, is that something that's yeah, I mean, if it's on brand, we'll yeah. we'll definitely. I think that's something I'm really excited about is connecting and collaborating with different creators as well. Yeah. Uh, I've got a handful of people that are excited to just receive their own iris and mm -hmm. test it out and review it and stuff. Mm -hmm. And some of them are like hard critics that totally um, I'm a little nervous about, but also confident about. It's this yeah. weird feeling where I'm just really excited to see what they do. But I'm excited for the direction things are going. I talked to my friend, he's a pro skier. Mm -hmm. And he was telling me the other day, like, cause I, I'm always thinking about like, where can you do a plugin? Where can you get incentivized? Where mm -hmm. can you do this? And he, he said something that was kind of inspiring in a way. Cause he's like, when I send it off a cliff, he's mm -hmm. like, I don't want to be thinking about a paycheck. Yeah. Like, I just want to be thinking about the landing, <laughs> the, the landing, not dying, <laughs> but just like the thrill and love of, of what it is. Yeah. And, 
before all social media and stuff like that, like my wife and I, we would just create just to create, yeah. you know, and we'd print out pictures and we would, mm. you know, make DVDs with videos mm -hmm. and show friends. Yeah. And I think that, uh, and I was even talking to my wife the other day, because sometimes we get so categorized, like what kind of photographer are you? Like what, mm. what kind of video maker are you? And if I, and then I asked my wife this the other day, I'm like, if you go back in time, what videographer were you? Mm -hmm. She's like, I don't know. Like there's not really a name for it. And I yeah. think it's kind of interesting that, and then with my friend skiing reference, it's like, it, it's kind of just going to the root of creating and loving video and all that. Yeah. Is what our, we want our YouTube to be, which I feel like it's just maybe the noise and instantaneous content that everyone's receiving. It's mm -hmm. kind of gone away from that a bit. I mean, TikTok, I can go on that for hours and laugh my head off. Sure. Yeah. But there is something that's disconnected a bit. So mm -hmm. I don't know. We we always try to provide value in our content. So we'll probably just continue to do that more and have it feel more like the hobby and yeah. thing we love to do. Than well, it takes the pressure off of it. Yeah. You yeah. know, you can focus on the brand, get the income from that. And yeah. yeah. Which brings that's more great. creativity. It's weird. Uh, yeah, as soon as they sense. like bring paychecks, all of a sudden your yeah. brain is working differently. You're thinking about how to satisfy the, where the money's coming totally. from, you know, versus yeah. like, what if I just want to tell the story about this trip? Totally. Yeah. yeah. Which is great. So yeah, I yeah. mean, future's bright and we're, you know, there's been a ton of bumps in, in the road, but ultimately we're optimistic. Yeah. yeah. There's a, no way to avoid them. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Going back into it, can you think of three three field notes that you would take away from all of the stuff that you've learned? Think about think about if you were seeing a young videographer that had an entrepreneurial spirit, what are three things you would tell that entrepreneur so you set them off into a more successful route? Three things. Yeah. Field um, notes. The hustle is real. And mm -hmm. like, that's the only... It never stops. No matter how big you get, it, it, does. it never stops. <laughs> and like people might say like, oh, but you have like Instagram following and stuff like that. Mm. doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Like you have to, and you have to be like your main cheerleader as well. Because mm -hmm. the, most, the most thing I realized in this is that it really is you're alone, mm -hmm. you know, and you, you, you fortunately find these people that mm -hmm. can see your vision, mm -hmm. but you're driving it. Mm -hmm. And even Bo was telling me, he's like, that's why CEOs have most equity in company. That's mm -hmm. why they get the biggest payout is because those initial like starting points mm -hmm. are hard. Yeah. And, and you, you have, have to grind to hustle and grind mm -hmm. and like you have all the hats on. So to someone starting up, it's like, just remember that you have all the hats on, but mm -hmm. if you believe in it enough and push it, I mean, and I'm still not there yet, but I, uh, I have confidence that it will work. And yeah, that's the first thing is like definitely hustle. The second would be network, mm -hmm. I think. Definitely. Um, networking and then connecting those dots and never burning bridges. Yeah, finding resources. Because, yeah. I mean, one thing led to another. The way I met Bo was actually through a, a client I did production work with. Mm -hmm. And then that didn't, I mean, that was its own story, but we connected through there. Mm -hmm. And then through Bo, I was able to connect with you guys. With mm -hmm. you guys, now I'm connected to, you know, all the factories. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, it's just networking um, and just being a good person. I mean, I don't know. I think it's a bad stigma. It's like, you have to be like a douchebag in this business to get successful, right? It's like, mm -hmm. don't get walked over. Mm -hmm. But uh, but like this, you can't really network if you're yeah. not a good guy. Like You I can be know. friendly and stern at the same time. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I think it's very important. But yeah, networking, I think, is huge. That's where I've been able to connect with a ton of just mm -hmm. awesome people that have been able to bring this to life. Yeah. I always thought it was like important. You know, I use LinkedIn as my tool to connect with people where it's yeah. like, if I meet someone that's interesting, you know, where I can see some some kind of interaction business-wise, I always make sure if I don't get their number, at least connect with them on LinkedIn, Yeah, you know, yeah. as a little, so I, I know it's like, if a scenario comes up where I might need someone with that experience or that resource, I, there, I know where to find them. I could search for them and find them easy, Yeah, you know, so. Yeah. I mean, and that's the thing. If, if these are like, if there's like videographers listening and they just don't know where to start, it's like network within the industries you're in. So mm -hmm. if you're filming, if you're filming like real estate videos, yeah, like, Get to know those people you work with. Mm -hmm. Ask what they do. Mm -hmm. You know, connect there and just like mm -hmm. network like crazy. If it's in yeah. weddings, talk to the parents. What work do you do? How can I help? You mm -hmm. know, let them know the value you can take them. Um, 
but then when it comes to this it's like just all those contacts and 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 people you come in contact with eventually you give them value and they'll give value back mm-hmm. so yeah yeah third one i don't know those are two good ones those, we, i think we could go with ones. that we'll go with good. those yeah because yeah, i i mean even thinking from my perspective when i started this company i mean i was a solo guy in a yeah, one bedroom it. apartment you know so it's <laughs> yeah. like in, in order to do that like you know i remember and this is you know like now nine years ago but at the time you know i remember there was a few times i couldn't pay rent and stuff i had to figure out how to pay rent you know and it was tough but it was like you know i just kept leaning into my network you know and, yeah. and i know that if i went to a networking event and i knew one person there and I go talk with that one person, they're going to introduce me to this person they're standing yeah. next to. And it, it eventually, you know, expanded outward. And especially with like, you know, digital connections too, where it's like, you know, even if you don't meet them in person, you know, if you leverage the platforms, like everybody's so accessible these days. Yeah. So it's like, if you're, if you're not doing work and you don't have paid work at the time, for example, like let's say you're, you know, paid by the job or something. Yeah. yeah. It's like, then you better be sitting, you know, either on a computer connecting with people and messaging them and making connections or reaching out to connections about their connections yeah. or whatever. Um, or you're going to hit a wall, uh, or get out and go to, like you said, an event or whatever, right. or, um, yeah, get the most out of everything around you. Well, that makes a, that's total a, sense. That's applicable across the board then. It's not just photographers, but it's like mm-hmm. whatever you're doing, just be the best at it. Yeah. And then connect. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess that I do have a third one. Okay. Um, but it is like be humble, mm-hmm. right? Because in my mindset, um, and I think you actually told me something at the beginning, but it's like you can only get so far by yourself. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Definitely 100% bet on yourself. Mm-hmm. So like you, you're, you're alone in an apartment, you know, and you have mm-hmm. this idea. It's like, but, but there's no better investment than in yourself. Mm-hmm. Right. But when it comes to the point where you need to, you know, learn from people, like be humble. Oh yeah. And you know, like how many mm-hmm. mistakes and stuff have I made in this journey already, mm-hmm. but I'm better because of it. And I'm learning from like great people that have experience and wisdom in this area mm-hmm. where that has been like something that has perpetuated the, the work forward as well. So, and you know that the other people, you know, mentors and stuff have made way more mistakes than you. Oh, yeah. So you got to learn, learn from, from those. Yeah. yeah, I agree. So you don't have to, I always it. like to kind of force my way into mentorships with people. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, no. <laughs> yeah. You know, even though they might not know it at first, but over, you know, it's like if, if you get an opportunity to have dinner with someone that's experienced, you know, or have a drink or whatever, it's like, yeah. you know, to ask questions to them that makes them pause and think it's like, th- they'll find that conversation lucrative. Yeah. You know, true, where yeah. it's like, okay, that's a d- question I haven't really had to answer before, you yeah. know, and then they'll think about it and they'll think back to past history or whatever. And then you'll walk away from that dinner with, you know, knowledge that they wish they had before they made that mistake, preventing you from making it yourself. And yeah. that's incredible. And that's just, you know, offering to buy someone dinner or whatever, yeah. or like, a, you know, have a cup of coffee or whatever. I, I feel like that stuff is like, th- that's super valuable. And that happens at every stage mm-hmm. too. Oh yeah. You know, it's not yeah. just the beginning. As soon like as you everywhere. stop doing that, you're at risk of uh, pausing and hitting a wall. <laughs> yeah, you know so what true. I mean? Like I always try to, you know, yeah. Even with like, you know, clients that are just starting, I feel like I still want to put the same amount of energy in, in picking their brains just as much as I would someone that's very experienced. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. They're going to have experiences as well or, or skill sets that are, you know, super valuable and easy to learn from. And as soon as you put yourself in a position where it's like, if you are not humble, you're not going to take the time to ask those questions to the, you know, someone at a different level or wherever they're at. And, And it's like, then that could prevent you from learning something that actually could be super valuable. Totally Another true. wall that you put up if you don't do that. It's those walls that screw you over. Because mm-hmm. you put up those walls and you're like, this is my project. This is my success. This mm-hmm. is my company. This is, you know. Mm-hmm. And every one of those walls without like that blind you just just put you in mud and you can't progress. Yeah. This is a great one. Those are three good notes. There you go. We'll write it on the wall. <laughs> right on the wall. <laughs> put it up there. Yeah, dude. Thanks for coming. No, yeah, man. I appreciate it. This is... Uh, this is great. I haven't been able to talk about this. And I mean, yeah, you guys have been so much of a help in this process. So mm-hmm. super appreciative. Okay. That was it. Brad Devine. Thanks for listening and watching. There's a lot of great takeaways there. 
it was interesting to hear the journey that they went through becoming, you know, wedding photographer and videographer to how they started working together as a husband and wife to how they began to travel the world and document it and share it with everybody else on YouTube. And then also get inspired in building a product line with Holdland. And it's really interesting to hear the the stage of events that he went through and they went through to create where they're at today. So some of those takeaways that I thought were super valuable and totally agree with. Always finding ways to connect with your community. Obviously, as a creator like himself, it's very important that he stays connected with his community. You know, and that's his YouTube following, whoever else follows him on any other channels or him and his wife's page or her page and staying connected with them, interacting with them, taking feedback with them, and then technically building with them, which is incredibly valuable where it's pretty much going into his project with validated you know, information and direction. Social media is super valuable, but as soon as you lose that momentum, it's really hard to build back up. So it's worth just staying on top of it like we're trying to do here. The other thing is the the hustle's real. And, you know, I know this because no matter how big of a company we get, it evolves, changes, and becomes more and more complex. And it doesn't really go away. As soon as you stop hustling, you lose momentum just like with social media and you have to build it back up and it's really hard to keep it going. But if you have that mentality of just continuing to go and go and go, you know, eventually things will pop and you will figure out a groove and you'll just get more and more used to the fact that you have to hustle to keep it growing. Also, another point is, you know, you have to be your own cheerleader. You know, you have to take risks and push yourself and just make it happen and, and, you know, just get after it. It's, you know, it could be difficult. You have to believe in yourself. And if you believe in yourself, it's, I, I see it as less risk because you can control the outcome in more ways possible versus, you know, relying on, you know, other channels or other things to work out, you know, it's better to just look inward and believe in yourself and invest in yourself and what you're doing. And then of course, obviously just stay humble and be a good person Everybody you interact with at any level throughout the way, they will either be your supporter or your enemy, and it's worth getting as many supporters as you can. So I absolutely agree with that. Thanks for listening to this week's episode. It was a lot of fun to catch up with Brad, especially as we work closer and closer to launching the project that we've been working on for well over a year. Very excited for that to come to market. Follow us on all the social media channels. You know, Anywhere podcasts come out, we should be on there. And Thanks for watching. See you in the next couple weeks.